Mamy pilno lesi. So that was some kind of GS. You should have one of those in these places. Actually, yeah, it, it's good for this job. So, is it working? And the crash bar. Oh yeah. The bike? Yeah, you can see. Actually, it works. And the bike too. The bike is still working. Yeah. And why it's down? I wanted to test the crash bar. And? It's sitting on it. So, I can see that the turning light is over there, it's protected. I can see that that crash pad on the crash bar does a pretty good job. Yeah, it's uh, outside, it, it protects the fairing and it's pretty good. But uh, although I have that crash bar, I also have these hand guards that are metal. And they, they should work together and uh, keep my bike in one piece. I need your help with something. Yeah. Can you help me with something? It depends on... Uh, I need to see your muscles working because I need oh, to lift no, up the bike. Uh, I, I got a problem, you know, with my back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Every time, I, some, I, I cannot do every that. Every time somebody asks you to help, you have a problem. Oh, it's light. Pretty light, yeah. Actually, it's not a GS, so <laughs> it's very light. Yeah, I think it should be a GS from now on, but I, I'm, I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen next, next. Everything okay over there? Yeah, just a small, very small scratch over here and on the ground. Nothing else. We're in the shop and it's time for a new video. We have with us the BMW F900XR and the S1000XR. Are you ready to get your hands dirty? No. Why not? Because it's your job to do that. Yeah, but I want to teach you, I want to train you. Okay, so be a teacher. I'm gonna study, I'm gonna just have a look because tomorrow we're gonna have a pretty tough day, about 700 kilometers on these bikes, on twisties, on the highway. Even in the city, because we're living in the city and we have to escape from the city and we have to decide which one is better. It's a kind of David versus Goliath because this one is less powerful, less expensive, less push, less electronics. This one is fitted with almost everything you might wish to have on a bike. Yeah, I will be riding that one. I'm eager to see you get your hands dirty. <laughs> Don't scratch anything, please. Some stickers. F900, so this should be a set of crash bars. Yeah, I think so. This is a tank bag. Check out this windshield because it's so tall. You can check out all these accessories at the guys at Hornig. This is the website. It's www.mhornig.de. It's a shop especially for the BMW bikes. You can find all the accessories you might need close to 20 centimeters taller than the usual one. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna do a great job because I got a lot of buffeting from the original screen and maybe this one will be better. And I think it's better because it comes, it's fitted perfectly and it's also adjustable. If you want to take it down in the city, you can do that. For me, it's just in the eye line at my height. For you, it's gonna be even better. I hate looking through the screens. Okay. Give me this one. Maybe something for the screen. Tell you in a few seconds. Oh, I think it's a set of something. Hand guards or something. No, this is a plate for the side stand. Yes. And this is the other part for the plate. Yes. This thing looks like a, like a support for the Navi. It's pretty useful because you can fit stuff on it. Even the telephone. Yeah, uh, this is for the F9 and, and this is the good part about it because you have the risers over here. This bike will become a lot more comfortable to ride at longer trips. Okay, so what we got for the XR, we got the handlebar risers, we got the crash pads, we got the higher screen, we have this GPS mount. Yes, the plate for the side stand. So this one is for the big XR, the yep. 1000 XR, I'm pretty curious. This should be for the big one. Maybe 10 horsepower more? 
these are hand guards that Whoa. you can fit for over that one. They should look nice. This is not an enduro bike, but still, I love the aggressive look of the hand guards. Don't mess things up. Sorry. I'll get you out of the shop in no time. So these are a set of crash bars that we should put on the XR small box. And this is? This is for the handlebar. You know that bags that you can put on the handlebar to fit whatever you, I don't know. Oh, it's like a, like a pouch for the handlebar. Yeah, exactly. Size 10 foot enlargement is this one. And this is a brake pedal enlargement tool. So you fit this one above the brake pedal and it should become a bit more comfortable to use it. A windshield. Yeah, the most useful part for this XR. So it's a lot bigger than the, the one that the bike comes with. And I think this is all. So uh, which one do you want to work on? Which bike do you choose? Uh, none. Do you need help? What should I do? Uh, you can, should... Can I go to get some beer or something like that? Or I don't know, maybe a pizza or something like that? Let's start with the windshield because this is a very easy job to do. So I think I want you to do that. What do you say? Yeah. Please. Which way? Uh... You go untighten to the left, tighten to the right. My, my left? <laughs> Our left. <laughs> do you have something electric for this? Uh, yes, but I want you to work. So be careful, do you need these ones? I should start with the one on the right, I left it over there. Like yeah, you, you, it's adjustable, you can, you can push it down if you want. And there is even a taller one. Even I a taller one? Yeah, yep. But when I discussed with the guys at Hornig, <laughs> uh, we agreed that this one is better because that one was huge. So this is the lower position? Yeah. And the taller position. So, is this all for today? No, we have some more. <laughs> do you think you can do this job? No. This job? No. I don't know. So, I, I, fit I, some stickers. Yeah. Yeah. Fit it over there. So, I think centimeter by centimeter. The tightening torque for every Fork wrench. Right. Don't scratch it. Pay attention. Do your job as you're supposed to. Take him alive. These are the crash bars, but I need your help. So this one is the 165 horsepower engine. Yeah, it's derived from the... s 1000 R. It doesn't have the shift cam, although it's a very powerful engine. Uh, it's just like the one on the latest superbike produced by BMW. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, uh, nice feeling while you roll the throttle because the bike, it's a bit more... Predictable, it's not as snatchy and as uh, yeah. insane as the previous model. Yeah, it's more civilized in the low RPM range, but once you can get used to it and start revving it up after 7,000, 8,000 RPM, it transforms into a beast. We have to remove the engine bolts, two engine bolts. I think this one, and there's one uh, over here. It's actually a hole for the, the... That's a hole over there, and this one the is... Crash bar. is you, this one, you just have to remove it, and I think we will we'll replace it with one provided by Honig over here. <laughs> it's not this one. Uh, oh, I think this, this one. one. Yeah, this one it is. Shaibo. Uh, uh. <laughs> As you say it in Romania, yeah. yeah. And it is Shaibo. Fit this one like this, and I think we have to remove the side fairing in order to fit it over here. Okay. But, I think they're looking quite good, quite solid. Yeah. Because usually these ones are looking very good on adventure bikes because it's natural to have crash bars on adventure bikes. But on sport touring bikes, they might look sometimes a bit awkward. But these ones over here, I think they 
I think that they fit pretty good because also there is this color theme of the bike with uh, black and white and this BMW Motorsport colors. So yeah, I think that my colleague over here did a pretty good job of fitting them. So you need like, what, half an hour for each side? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Even better than half an hour. It's a 15 minutes job per side, if you know how to remove the fairings. Let's get to the next one. So what do you say? You want to change the windshield? And this, uh, this one is the tall windscreen from BMW. You got two options when buying this bike. And this is the touring one. Easy to fit. We have a tank bag that we can also stack on the bike with uh, some Velcros. We rushed into things because the cradle should be fitted behind the windshield. So I'll have to remove the windshield. Don't scratch the crash bar. It has to be shiny on you every time. So we got a twin cylinder engine, 900 cc, 95 horsepower, it's A2 compliant, and it's a great engine, trust us. I had this one as a long-term test machine for last year. And I still have one. And you still have one. Yeah, I have the 900R, which is a very cool bike. I like it a lot, actually. Like this? You have to remove this one? I think so. Looks like a very important bolt. That's it, we upgraded the bikes for touring. Actually, yes, they are super touring machines right now. They have everything you can wish for. Even the protection, it's uh, pretty important that we have it. We have some extra luggage space and uh, you know what's next? Let's ride. Yeah, let's do the riding part. Yeah, because tomorrow we're gonna have about 10 hours of riding. Did you know that? No. 10 to 12? But yeah. I think we can manage. We can manage to do that and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Let's go. some twisties and with the F900XR and I got broke the nail in front of me with the S1000XR and I'm really curious to see <laughs> how my bike feels on these twisties come on Bogdanel what happened to you <laughs> S1000XR this bike is a lot of fun but you have to work out a lot you have to move around the saddle because the bike uh, it's a leader and uh, it doesn't like to steer that much over there is christian passing me just because he has a bit more mid-range than me but uh, he, he won't go far away my bike is more agile you can see that the big xr it has one little engine he has to rev it up so in the fast corners on the on straight lines he moves faster than me but when it comes to twisties the f900 xr is the king even if it comes with less power than the big s1000 xr
other than that it's very fun to ride it's very fun to keep it in the mid-range <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun and I think that it's one of the best sports touring bike on the market The quick shifter works like magic and also the suspensions are superbly uh, adjusted I'm on dynamic, they are the electronics ones, the ESA and they feel quite good because uh, this road is not that flat and you have some bumps and uh, you get a lot of feel from the front end it's a pleasure to do this and right now Christian will get fast yes he will <laughs> damn it <laughs> yeah, he's a tough rider <laughs> nice This is Viscri, one of the most beautiful villages in Romania, in Transylvania actually, because this is the place we're in. Uh, so if you want to uh, travel in time and to see how these people lived like 200 years ago, you should come and visit this village because these houses that you can see over here, some of them, I think half of them, are transformed into hotels. Exactly. And they look very nice. And, and they are close to 200 years old so yeah, this is like pretty that. nice yeah it's a piece of history and it's work it's worth uh, coming by if you're nearby in this place Sigishwara is also nearby so a lot of cool and beautiful places to visit uh, now let's get back to the bikes because we already had like 400 kilometers or something like that today something like that yeah and we had a lot of fun which one did you enjoy the most I think uh for the open road, I uh, I loved riding the XR, but um, I was biting my lips today because uh, you were faster than me on twisties with the 900, so yeah. I'm still upset about that. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I don't want to talk with you anymore. Lucky you that we are filming, otherwise I won't speak with you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not just the bike, it's also that uh, I'm becoming a better rider, better and better, every day, every year. Okay. And uh, it's also the bike, of course. <laughs> okay. No, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was quite fun to see you. It was like you you had the brake open or something like that on the twisties because your bike wasn't moving at all. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, probably. Uh, were you on the dynamic riding mode or rain? Yeah, or I was. Like? I was riding dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. So probably the trick is that this XR with its two-cylinder engine pulls like insane at around 4,000, 5,000 RPM. You don't have to rev it up. <laughs> you got all the power in the mid-range and it's very fun to ride on the twisties. Contrary to the big XR that uh, lacks the power at around 4,000 RPM, so yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a big... Uh, 
It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Yeah, probably on the fast turns, this one would be faster and obviously... It's faster because I'm riding. Yeah, or if you're going on track, this one would be faster, uh, the 1000, but otherwise the 900 is pretty cool. So, what else? Tell me more about your bike. Ergonomic suspension wise, uh, electronic uh, suspension, the ESA is for both of them. They were on dynamic. Pretty plush actually, lots of feeling, lots of uh, feedback from this front suspension. You can ride it very fast, which is important. And there's also uh, a comfort feature about it. Oh, the GS is coming. The so saddles were pretty plush, so... Really? Yeah, they, they are very plush. I think uh, it has a uh, lot of support coming from this saddle on the XR, the big one. And uh, it feels uh, very good at the open road, so f after 400 kilometers I still can ride. So this is important because I usually complain about saddles. The wind protection is improved right now because of the new windshield. Uh, it's uh, just perfect. If I leave it in the upright position, uh, afterwards I have to just tuck in a bit because I'm taller than you and I feel some buffeting in the helmet area. You know, there is also even a taller windscreen than this one. This is not the maximum height. You can choose another one which is taller. But uh, yeah, come on, this is not the K1600 GTL. It's still a sports touring bike, so it should also be sporty. Exactly. And it is, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely it is. It, it feels quite sporty. You can ride it very fast. And this is a nice feature coming from the big XR. 165 horsepower. Exactly, no shift cam, uh, lots of power when you when you rev it up, so you still have to use it in the upper uh, RPM range because it feels uh, like uh, like a sports machine, like a super bike when you roll the throttle, exiting the corner, everything happens very fast and that's nasty. Yeah, at, at the beginning it's quite civilized actually. Exactly. It's a quite... Easy to ride bike, it's no drama, it's not like, not like the Aprilia Tuono or something like that, for example. It's not very brutal, you just have to rev it up if you want to, to get more from the engine. Uh, does it vibrate anymore? It still vibrates, so you can feel it really? through the foot pegs, but it's not like the previous model. And also, the big improvement is the quick shifter that works like magic, just like on my S1000 Double R, it changes uh, gears instantaneously. So, no vibrations in the handlebar anymore? Exactly. Okay, uh, also a lot of people are curious about the braking system because uh, it's the one from Hayes, I suppose. It's exactly. not the Brembo anymore, it's BMW branded. There's lots of stopping power over there, you don't have to worry about nothing because every time you squeeze the brake, uh, you don't have to do it very hard. The, the, the brakes are good enough to stop you even from 200 kilometers an hour. And the suspension, how, how would you put it? It's a sporty suspension? Or? It's on the sportier side. Yeah. yeah, but it's comfortable enough. It's comfortable enough to ride it for a couple of uh, hundred kilometers on a day. What about the small XR, the F900? Well, let me tell you a secret. I love it. <laughs> now you can't believe that. Yeah, really, because this was my long-term test bike from the previous year and I was so glad getting back to it. Really, I did and uh, yeah, I think it's one of the best sports running bike on the market because Bună ziua. Hello. It's got this nice balance between great handling bike, good engine, it also offers comfort, it also offers, offers weather protection, the engine, we discussed about it, uh, also the suspension, uh, the front suspension is not, uh, doesn't have dynamic ESA, it's not even mechanically adjustable, but for me it was no problem though, I didn't have to worry about it. Uh, the rear suspension comes with a dynamic ESA, I uh, had it on the both setups, road and dynamic, and it was pretty nice. I noticed when riding your bike that uh, if keeping the suspension in a road setup and revving it harder, it started to being, being wobbly a bit, so I had to put it on dynamic. But uh, yeah, for this one, it's no drama because the engine is not, uh, it's not that, that aggressive. Yeah. Not that aggressive and you cannot reach uh, 200 kilometers per hour easily. As you can do with the other one but still in the in the corners it was pretty fun to ride you, you got a lot of ground in the mid-range and that's quite uh, quite good the seat is not as comfortable as the one on the big xr this is the standard seat and uh, yeah it's not comfortable 
Uh, usually the guys at BMW are building very good seats, comfortable seats, but I would change this one, I would replace it with the comfort seat, which comes as an optional equipment, uh, because this one yeah, is not, is not uh, how I would like it to be. And uh, the riding position is okay, the ergonomics are perfect, uh, but speaking about the seat, you can see that there's also not enough space from the not enough room from the passenger the seat is short there are these handles but actually it's the same seat as the one on the f uh, uh, 900r it's yeah exactly actually, the same seat. i remember it yeah so it's a short seat it's uh you can get a passenger over there but it's mainly intended for solo riding so you must have that in mind compared to your seat which is huge it's pretty plush and huge yeah i like that about the big xr yeah so this is the difference yeah the suspension probably is not uh as i don't know as uh, as advanced and performant as the one on your bike uh, but still it does a pretty good job in my opinion the braking power uh, is also good but i liked uh, i liked a bit of the bite I found on the S1000 XR. Yeah, so these ones are more aggressive. Yeah, even though you have the Brembo signature over there and you have the radially mounted calipers, they look pretty much the same, but the braking power on the big one is better. Probably because of the, I don't know, the setting, maybe the braking pump, maybe it was... Should uh, be something like that, yeah. Something like that. What else, what else? Uh, okay, the weather protection is also good i think it's not as good as the one on the xr because this one comes with uh, less uh, fairings in the i don't know in the ankle area so you don't have so much fairings on this bike uh, this is the new windscreen it's also based on the old mechanism it's adjustable uh, for me i prefer keeping it on the lower uh, level because uh, I can see the road uh, when when going on the highway I'm gonna keep it on the high level I'm gonna watch to the screen and there will be no buffeting anymore on the level one I will have some buffeting on the in my ears but it's way better than the original one so having a taller windscreen is uh, I don't know it's a it's more than a nice to have on this kind of bike Tell me about the handlebar risers, which are in a different position and uh, also they are closer to you right now. Yeah, they're closer to me right now. I'm feeling excellent, but uh, I also love the, the original riding position. So for me, they're both working. Uh, probably if you're a shorter rider and, and you have to, to go in between cars and things like that, and you got to use the whole turning angle, these handlebar risers are very nice because they're bringing uh, the handlebar closer to you and it would be easier to turn it at the maximum angle. But yeah, they're a pretty good alternative if you want to change the, the riding position. Also, very important, a very important addition was this GPS mount that got from this place to this one and it's way better because it's just right in your sight and this is the place a gps system should be and together with the screen they offer uh, they transform it into a more touring friendly bike so yeah a good plus uh for the gps mount and yeah i think this is all you also have the side stand riser and uh, tank bag yeah the side stand riser actually does a good, good job because I've seen the bike gets very lean when it's uh, sitting yes. on the side stand. Yeah. You also have that bag over there which you can put some stuff in it and uh, yeah, it's helpful while going uh, for lots of kilometers. And the most important feature for me is the crash bar because today I've tested it. <laughs> yep, the crash bar is, uh, is a very important feature on almost every bike. A crash bar or a crash pad, you should have something over there when, I don't know, 
it's you don't want to crush and uh, break that fairing over there. It looks too nice. Besides the fairing, it's important not to crush and uh, break down the engine covers because uh, you will lose the oil inside the engine and afterwards you cannot ride anymore. So it's an important feature while riding on uh, on uh, bad roads. Yeah, it's a must have. Okay, uh, getting back to the bike because it's also important and I know that. Uh, Everyone is asking about it and we want to discuss about it. The light from the headlight is excellent. You can ride these bikes during the night. You don't need auxiliary lights. Uh, they also have uh, a turn uh, leaning uh, sensitive light. Okay, it's a nice to have. You can see it over there. It's visible. But the main thing is that you have enough light for riding during the night, for going touring. For and it's very important for us right now because it's getting dark in like half an hour. And exactly. The whole rest of the road <laughs> we're gonna spend on these bikes. We'll will ride be... at night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me, is there anything annoying about your bike that you noticed? Something I mean, annoying about yeah. this bike besides the RPM, the lack of power in the mid range? I don't know. I, I didn't find anything uh, upsetting. Uh, I dislike it in the city. I think it's uh, it's a bit too tall and a bit too big in, in order to ride it for the city. Yeah, but otherwise if you go on open road it's beautiful to ride. Nothing else. The wind protection is good. The position, uh, the riding position is pretty comfy. The brakes are good. Engine feels quite nice. The vibrations are gone. Quick shifter works very good. Nothing to complain about. Actually, uh, I, I would I would rather choose those tires instead of the the, the Bridgestones that my uh, so the Michelin ex are, yeah the Michelin Road Five they are beautiful beautiful uh, tires I rode for a bit with this ones uh, on the twisties and uh, I was feeling the bike uh, a lot better and more confidence was coming from the tire and this is very important these ones are good but uh, I like the feeling on them yeah. I noticed that too, and I noticed that also there is a difference when cornering between these two bikes. Let's put it like this, the Michelins are way thicker than the Bridgestone. Yes, and you should go for the Michelins. Exactly. No better the bike, <laughs> the XR, the S1000 or the F900. Now, about my bike, uh, I found something annoying about it. So th that? Th th there were two things. One of them was the thing with the clutch. When opening yeah. the clutch, now it's gone. It's I, gone? Yeah, I didn't feel it anymore. They made an update for the clutch, I think. Yeah, so it's, it's just perfect, the clutch, for me, or at least what I tried today. But there's one more thing. In the morning, early morning, after the night, when I'm trying to start the bike, it doesn't go from the first time at, at the cold engine. Cold ah. engine start. Yeah, it, it, you can exercise your finger. Yeah, Push twice, it a few times. Three times. Um, yeah, but, but the good thing about it is that it uh, starts in the end and you can ride it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so don't it complain start, about it. It should start, okay. <laughs> So, in the end, the price difference between the 900XR and the 1000XR would be around 4,000, 5,000 euros. It depends on the, on the gadgets and yeah. optional that you can uh, add up. So, finally, both bikes are worth it. But uh, if you don't have the budget or you don't like uh, speeding up, uh, you can buy the F900XR. Uh, if you want to go wheeling uh, from the corner and uh, hit 240 kilometers an hour you should definitely buy the big one yeah you hit the nail with that and i also share your opinion i would go for the exa uh yeah i think it's worth it's worth it and it's pretty fun to ride so that's it right yeah we're not allowed to drink bs because we are riding and uh, we should go home yeah we should we should do that yeah you take the small xr and go home right now i was thinking like could you borrow me the <laughs> no no, no. Mm, I, I'm not even hearing you. Yeah, I, I don't want to ride fast. I just want to stop complaining. No, ride the small one. Two beers. <laughs> Three. Three beers. <laughs> okay, that's all for now. I, I'm gonna go with uh, the F900XA, uh, and I'm gonna reach home, and I'm gonna be faster than you. You're gonna see that faster again. In your dreams. Faster again. Thanks for watching us. See you next time. Bye bye.